Good afternoon. This is MS There's Hope, and we're talking today with Ellen Santos. Good afternoon, Ellen. Hello. We're going to be discussing today Ellen's progress in the Flame Protocol, which is well over a year now, pushing on two years, and just see how her progress is, what, how she's doing. And uh, we want her to share a little bit about you out there that are contemplating the protocol and uh, maybe some questions of hers that have gotten answered along the way. Uh, I'm going to read a short medical disclaimer here, then we're going to jump right to the interview. This interview is about our own personal experiences uh, do it with MS while doing the Queen of the Protocol. We're not medical doctors, therefore not giving medical advice. Ways and means of treating chronic autoimmune disease varies per individual, and for this reason, we strongly recommend you seek the guidance of a trained medical professional. These are only our experiences doing the Queen Protocol and are meant for entertainment purposes only. Good to see you, Ellen. Tell us. My comments. Tell us everything, is, everything is good. I'm happy to report. Um, last time we talked, um, I had gotten an M a clean MRI, I think. I'm not sure that was around December is when I actually got the MRI. Um, I think we talked a few months after that. Um, I had gotten a clean MRI, um, but I had a small relapse. So I wanted to um, talk to you know my doctor about that. And so, so she suggested some further testing for molds and viruses, which we've been doing. And um, I just got my most recent MRI back a week ago and it was good news. There was nothing new. Everything is fine. Everything's been fine. Um, so I'm really happy. I'm really relieved. You know, it's there's been something I want to say about having an MRI. People, every time I've had one, I'm very uh, nervous. But yeah. I'm scared about what they're going to find. And every time it comes back the same, there are no new lesions. There's no growth. There's no progression. Yeah, it's a really stressful time for me now because I mean I think it's it'll be less stressful now because I've had two positive experiences in a row. But the you know, my first MRI in the hospital obviously was horrifying. And then I went for a follow-up and I was, you know, real positive thinking it's gonna be fine. Had a lot of lesions. And then I went for another MRI and I had a lot of lesions. So you know, the, the neurologist was like, this is an aggressive case. You have a lot of lesions. You need to get on Cybari or I don't know how you say that. Um, the, one, the one really effective DMT um, or Ocrevus. And then it turned out I got the JC virus testing. I was positive. I wasn't eligible for the one that really doesn't suppress the immune system. And so it was Ocrevus was suggested for me. And I had told, I had been looking, I, I had said, I said this in another interview, if you guys want to go re, uh, watch the older ones, you can get more of my story. But basically I had told myself, if I come back with more lesions, um, I'm going to try the Coimbra protocol. It seems like a long shot and it seems really um, intense. You know, it's a real intervention. It's not just like diet change or fasting, you know, it's something pretty serious. So I put it off and I'm like, I'm just going to, you know, do the autoimmune protocol, walls protocol, whatever. I'm going to eat my way through this. It'll be fine. And then I saw your interview with the woman from Germany who had said she thought she too could do that. And then she had a horrible relapse and ended up doing the point Coimbra protocol and is really involved now in spreading the word in Germany. And she kind of said, look, if you're in the beginning of your diagnosis, take it from me. Diet's not enough. You need to do something real. And that really stuck with me. So I said, I'm going to do it if the if if the MRI comes back like littered with with lesions, and it did. So I got in touch uh, with a with a doctor, and I started the protocol. In I was diagnosed in October of 2021. I started the code protocol in May of 2022. So then that December, um, so I got an I got an MRI right after I started the Coimbra protocol. And there were a few more lesions, um, which I expected. Wow, that's aggressive. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, I, I was prepared for that. 
I had told myself I'm going to give it six months at least, and I really should give it a year. But after six months, let's just see. And I was fully expecting to have a horrible MRI. That's what I've been used to. And that was the one that I got around December. And it was, there was nothing there, which I couldn't believe. And I had about two days of rejoicing. And then I got a relapse. <laughs> now explain your relapse. My relapse was um, numbness in my mouth. Um, I think that's it. It was numbness in my mouth, but it was the other side. Because originally my first and how symptom, long did it last for? Well, I didn't get steroids. I didn't even tell anybody about it, actually. I just kind of went with it. And it lasted, let me think. That was December, January, February, about two months. Now that is a long time. What I want to speak into about that with people is that is not uncommon. It's mm -hmm. not uncommon to have an old symptom or a symptom you haven't really uh, had that much, maybe it's just a tad of, and then all of a sudden it blows up. And why it is, I won't speak into because I'm not a doctor. All I can say is I've never seen it not go away. So I I thought, because I had come back with a, an MRI with no change, I thought, well, maybe because I have so many lesions, this is just one of those lesions flaring it's you know flaring and that was where it was located and that and that's why I had this symptom but my my Coimbra protocol doctor said mm, that's kind of wishful thinking usually in my experience if it's a new symptom it's usually a new lesion and my neurologist Correct. said Correct. he had said you know he said he didn't really agree with the radiologist tech or whoever was reading the, the, the that December MRI he's like I think I see a little one but they're saying they don't see anything. So I was like, all right, I'm going with, there's nothing there. Everything's fine, you know? So maybe that was it. Um, I don't know, but I was expecting to see a more development on this MRI only because I had had a relapse, but there was nothing. So it must've been that little one that he saw. I'm not sure, whatever. I'm just going with it because this is making, you know, this is, Working as well as I can imagine medication yes. would be, working, Yes. right? I would be, yes. if I was in like pharmaceuticals or immunosuppressants, and this was my trajectory, I feel like the neurologist would be completely happy with this. Yes. Like, everything's going fine. So I'm on the Coimbra protocol and yes. everything's going fine. So I'm, I'm continuing to meet with my doctor, continuing to drink my water and monitor my calcium. And I'm also learning about other things and I'm not stopping here. I'm a curious person. And the fact that, you know, I did do the testing for the molds and myco, mycotoxins and viruses. And I came up really high in the molds, like really high. So my doctor does want me to do a mold protocol, which I am going to do, but I'm just not ready for it yet. I'm in my busy season. I'm going to wait until... Um, you know, I have off for the winter pretty much. I might have a seasonal job. So I'm going to wait until like January to do it because let I me, let me call speak into that there. just a little bit. What she's saying is exactly right. Focus on your most important or critical thing. It was important to her that her MS got stopped first. MS is a very debilitating disease and it is terrible if it progresses. I'm not saying that other diseases uh, or allergies aren't bad, mold and gluten or whatever. We'll address those, but please first address your MS, then worry about your other things. Go ahead, Ellen. And just to clarify, you know, because it gets totally overwhelming when you feel like you have to do everything. Yes, yeah. Just to clarify what my lifestyle has been like in the last you know, since starting the Coimbra protocol, um, I, I smoked for years. I quit smoking the day that I went to the hospital for the MS. Um, then though the next summer I started vaping a little, you know, <laughs> because it was just, I just, no, I did. I so understand. I was, You're talking I was good vaping. smoker. So I understand. Yeah. So I was vaping until like last November and I could feel when I would take a hit, my legs would start to feel weird. Like there was something wow. there, something inflammatory, I think, um, in there that was causing 
like immediate symptoms. Right. And I still did it. I don't know what the hell is wrong with us, but that's how we are. And yeah. so finally quit and, you know, and being at the campground where I, I own a campground, that's always my biggest trigger. So this past year I was worried, but I didn't smoke. I didn't vape. I didn't even want to. Um, I don't really drink much. So like that helps, I think, because it's more of a social kind of party thing. But, you know, I don't avoid gluten. I avoid dairy, obviously, because that is the calcium. But I I eat crap sometimes, you know, sure. I pieces, pieces you wanna, you when I live life, you know. Yeah. And uh, I do eat a lot of vegetables and I eat really, you know, I, I eat a lot of real food, but especially these past couple months, you know, just stress from work. I was really hammering like the processed food and the candy and just, just, I had no time to cook these healthy meals and it's still okay. You know, they're like you said, first thing first, You're right. And D is, is the, is important. All the other stuff is important too. I I'm, I'm actually, I've been doing the fasting mimicking. Um, I'm, I've been doing a fast once a month. For That's five so good for you. Yes. And I, and that probably has something to do with this too, because I know that it, it's basically works at the same way an immunosuppressant would, but a more mild natural version of that. Yeah. And so I, I'm going to keep doing everything I'm doing. I'm going to continue to try to dial in my diet without becoming obsessed because that just causes stress. Yes. And yes. I really I agree that with the you. biggest thing for me has been alleviating a lot of my stress and anxiety. I think that's had the biggest mm. side from the vitamin Something that you're talking about there is people turn the protocol into a religion and they think, oh, I ate ice cream. What do I do now? And they'll call me and they're like, I forgot to drink 40 ounces of water. What do I do now? People, all of this, yes, do it as close as you can. But if you have a slice of pizza tonight, don't call me or call Ellen. Just drink more water tomorrow. It isn't going to kill you. You know, mm -hmm. and that's the way the protocol is. There are guidelines and we should try to stick to them. you got to mm -hmm. understand the guidelines are set up so that when you do fail, you're still in a safe area. Go ahead. Ellen. And, and nobody is ever going to do it perfectly, no matter how badly they want to at least not for more than maybe three months. That's been my experience with diet and everything. Yeah, you can hammer yourself into discipline for about three months, but if you have that mindset, it's not gonna last. No. So I have no. really relaxed a lot around all of my habits, you know, meditation, exercise, yoga, journaling, all of this stuff that is so good for me that I want to do, I, I just have relaxed around like the, the discipline part. And I have been doing it more consistently, I think, because of that. Um, so, yeah, I just think the mindset is really important. The most important, I would say, besides obviously the vitamin D, you know, seeing a therapist or having a, a coach or, you know, just, just the brand. music more. Somebody you can talk to, you know, yep. it's important. It is. It, 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 it was really important for me. I knew because my nervous system was in such a state of fight or flight all the time. And I just feel so much better now from, from what I've been doing. And I'm just really happy that I followed my intuition when I saw you on Facebook, you know, even though at first I was like, eh, these people seem a little nutty, you know, how it is with something. I am a little bit nutty, but <laughs> yeah, that's my side point. The but you know, you, it's easy to talk yourself out of it because it's scary. It's scary. Everybody who is an authority is telling you, yes, it doesn't work. Yes. Don't be an idiot. And then, you know, there are these people on Reddit, like I, on the MS uh, subreddit, because I love Reddit, who have had MS for a long time and are like, do yourself a favor, take these drugs. And, you know, you, you got to take it seriously. And so it's hard to follow that inner voice I think amidst all of that, all of that static. And I'm just really proud of myself, honestly, that I, that I did. You have to, that's the, that's the whole thing. You know, I, I, whenever I, Ellen and I were talking a while ago, we were talking about a hope and if we could give anybody anything, it's hope that you can live, look at Ellen. She lives a normal life. I mean, 
my MS for progress much, many more years than Ellen, and I'm in a wheelchair, but my life is normal. I live a good life. And that's the thing with MS, I was told, you know, you're basically, I was told your life is over. You know, your hope is a slow progression. But me and Ellen both know that's not the truth. Anyway. And, but, you know, I would be lying if I, if I said that I was not afraid still, you know, I'm still scared because I, I just don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. We, we know, we know, whenever I was talking to you earlier, we are talking about, we know what MS does to us. We know how bad MS is. But I was telling Ellen that I'm going to interview somebody at the end of November who did the protocol eight years ago. And she basically said to me, I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't remember. Isn't that lovely? Eight years, she's been completely normal now. And she doesn't even remember MS. I, I mean, some of the symptoms I'll read sometimes and I'm like, Oh yeah, I, I, I remember that. But unless they were brought up to us, we don't remember it. You know, yeah. and it's, that happened to me at my last appointment, actually, my doctor said, Oh, so you're, you're not having those create, you call them crazy legs anymore before your period, before your period comes. I was like, Oh yeah, no, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh man. I wrote a note in my journal one time that said these spasms in the back of my tricep are driving me crazy. And I wrote the date. I don't even remember that. I don't ever remember having spasms in my tricep. I mean, there I had spasms throughout my body, especially my face. And I haven't had one in seven years and I don't plan on ever having them again. Yeah. So yeah. doctor asked me the other day, my neurologist, um, oh, are you still having the uh, afternoon slump, you called it? And I was like, yeah. I said, but I think I've been having that like since I was 25 and had a full time. It's called nap. growing older too. Yeah. You, you eat lunch and then you want to nap. <laughs> yes. You don't want to go back yes. to work. Everybody wants to take a nap when you get older. It, you know, it, you don't even have to eat. Just, but I've started drinking tea in the afternoons instead of the morning. And that really works. It helps. Yeah. I, I I drink caffeinated beverages. You know, we were talking a little bit there about the uh, adding things to and doing one thing at a time. One thing I wanted to tell people is that um, I get headaches, I get aches, and I take pain relief because I'm a big wuss and I don't like pain. Um, probably they're on the protocol. They're not recommended. I don't care. I don't like being in pain. So when I get a headache, I take some ibuprofen, you know, that's what we're saying about this whole thing is that just do it and don't stress yourself doing it. That's yeah. what Helen hit on one of the real keys there. And that is do not stress yourself out. It works give it time mm -hmm. you know she was talking about being uh, afraid a little bit too still that's normal too we know how bad ms was we've been through ms and we don't ever want to experience it again and we just we want it to be real we want it to keep working and even though there's people that are telling you it, it'll be all right i've had it 10 years I'm doing my, you're going to be okay you've kind of got to live through it you've got to experience yeah it. yeah for some reason it's hard to believe it's hard to believe it is yeah it's it is it is got any more for us I think that's it I mean I'll keep you guys wonderful, wonderful interview I yeah I, you're looking great thank uh, you it's good to see your smiling face and let's do this again in what six more months Sounds good to me. All right. Sounds good, Ellen. All right. Well, I'm going to get off here then. Take All right. Care. And our next interview is going to be with David Lyons, I believe, who was a fitness instructor. All right. Take care.